Joining me now on the phone is Andy McCarthy, National Review contributing editor, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, and a guru as far as these matters are concerned. Andy, so glad you could join me. It's a 37-page indictment. Uh, there is one sentence that stood out in that indictment to me. Let me just read it to you and show it to our viewers. Some defendants posing as U.S. persons and without revealing their Russian association communicated with unwitting individuals associated with the Trump campaign and with other political activists to seek and to coordinate political activities. Unwitting individuals, Andy, uh, to me, that seems to mean no Americans committed a crime here. Yeah, I think that's not only what it means, David, I think it's also what Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein um, stressed in his remarks at the press conference. It seems to me that this shows that there's no collusion, not that that's surprising at this point, on at least two levels. One is uh, if they had to talk to Americans unwittingly, obviously the Americans who were connected to the Trump campaign uh, did not know that they were dealing with Russians. But more to the point, if there had been a pipeline of corrupt conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin, then the Russians would not have had to dupe campaign officials, right. whether they were Trump officials or anyone else, into, their, into what they were trying to accomplish. That would have been an open pipeline of assistance. Now, is it, is it vital for Americans to find out which Americans and who were associated with the Trump campaign were, were the unwitting participants of this? Well, I think you know, we'll have to see where this goes. My, my own view of it is, for what, for what it's worth, is I, I really don't understand what they're doing here. Um, it, it, it seems to me that they've filed what essentially is a political document because everybody knows there's not a chance that we're going to get any of these Russians uh, into an American courtroom for a trial. And what's implicated here is a lot of activity that Americans engage in and a lot of activity that, uh, that our government and uh, representatives of our government engage in in the world in order to try to, to influence events in other countries. And it just seems to me that if, as the Justice Department said, the Russians are engaged in uh, information warfare against us, uh, it, it doesn't seem to me that the, the criminal justice system is the way that you respond when a country is engaging in warfare against you. That seems like a political and a diplomatic issue. And by making it into a criminal issue, we at least provoke the possibility that other countries are going to act in kind against us. Interesting point. Interesting point. Let, let me just ask, though, whether there, there could be a phase two of this indictment. That is, this phase... Uh, clearly lays out what the Russians were involved with, even if it's, these people are unindictable because they're never coming back to the United States. And we already knew that the Internet Research Agency, which was the company that was being used, their front company, if you will, uh, we've known for, for months, if not years, that it was a trolling organization used by Putin and his associates. Uh, so all these, these figures are, are unindictable. However, could there be more... Uh, could there be other people involved in this, unbeknownst to us now, uh, that Mueller might be investigating, in particular U.S. citizens? Sure, it's possible, although it certainly looks, from what we're seeing here, that there weren't Americans involved in this uh, in a, con a conscious, complicit way. Uh, so you have to ask at a certain point, what is the point of what we're doing here? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't look like this activity um, did much in the way of having an impact on the election. A lot of it just looks uh, kind of amateurish, if you ask me. So but, I, I uh, got to ask a final question, Andy, because we're short on time. But is, is it then your feeling that, uh, as, as we see from this, it's, it's, there's a lot of interesting information for us as, as journalists, and it's, it's a fascinating uh, a turn of events. However, uh, from a legal standpoint, it's not that much. Does this mean to you that the investigation, the Mueller investigation, as it were, is close to an end? No, I think the, the Mueller investigation, David, I think is mainly concentrated right now on obstruction rather than collusion. I think, you know, all we learned today 
is a confirmation of something everyone knows. The Russians try to, in, to interfere in our elections, and they were doing it before Trump ever came along. Yeah. What I think Mueller is focused on right now is obstruction. Okay, and so there is, there is more to go. Uh, people in the White House are, are not completely off the hook. Well, Manafort isn't even going to be tried for months yet, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, that case, that case is going into next year. Andy McCarthy, always a pleasure to hear your analysis, Andy. Thank you very much.